he, he kind of gives Hal Steinbrenner some cover. Uh, because it, I, we we did a, a Twitter poll the other day. About 5,000 people voted. 51% of Yankee fans said don't sign him. 49% said sign him. So it's almost right down the middle. But, you know, the, 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 the comments to Rosenthal are... Uh, agitating the Yankee fans. So by saying this, he does give the Yankees some cover if, in fact, they, they want to sign him. And, and I don't know if you believe uh, this, but I truly believe the Yankees are very in on this, and I believe that they, there's a good chance they would sign him. I think that's where he goes, personally. I said it before the before the season, before the off season. I think this is the guy. You know, everybody was talking about Harper, Harper, Harper for years. Uh, but the last couple of years, Machado is the guy who I thought really had a better chance to be uh, be a Yankee. I think you know the 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 infield was a bigger need. Obviously, with Didi's you know injury certainly made it a different situation, uh, as well as Andujar's emergence this year. But that said, Didi's a free agent next year. You can always try to move Andujar to first base. Or trade him. I mean, even after next season, that guy's going to have four years of control left and be very valuable to a lot of teams, assuming he has another good year. Um, so there is a lot of flexibility, both roster-wise and now financially, with them getting under the luxury tax threshold, that, uh, you know, they're the Yankees. They, they go out after stars. That's what they do. You know, Michael, you're not calling games of AAA guys on yes. You're calling games with Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton and big stars. Manny Machado would fit that mold very well. So, you know, I think I, I think the Yankees, this reminds Reminds me a lot of 2008, the, the way that we're hearing this uh, this off season go, where it's you know every time you hear cash talk, it's pitching, 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 and they made the Paxton trade, and they brought CC back, and now they're talking about a Corbin or a Hap, and they're going to do all the pitching that they want, just like they did mm -hmm. with Sabathia and Burnett in 08, and then all of a sudden a week later it was oh by the way we're signing Mark Teixeira also, so even if they sign Patrick Corbin or Hap or Ottavino or whoever else it may be. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the cherry on top, uh, you know, sometime in December was Machado. I guess what's interesting to me is in 2009, they were coming off a year in which they had missed the playoffs for the first time in forever. They won 100 games last year, Mark, and I think that if D.D. and Judge stay healthy all year, they probably would have won more. So how odd is it to make these vast amount of changes and these big splashes for a team that was outstanding and really only was dwarfed by the fact that the Red Sox had this historic season that they're probably not going to be able to duplicate? You're right, but when you, you know, think about the fact that the Red Sox, you know, won eight more games than them and won the World Series, that, that whether they want to admit it or not, that puts some pressure on them. It mm -hmm. has to, right? Uh, so, you know, that, and, and Brian Cashman's always looking at his team and saying, where can it get better? No matter how good it was. I mean, I'm sure after the 98 season, he looked at his roster and said, where can we get better? Uh, because, you know, guys leave, you have guys move on, um, and I just, you know, you look at it, I mean, if they bring back Hap, well, that's a guy who was there last year, so even though that's going to cost them a lot of money, uh, it, it's, it's what they had last year, you're just bringing back the same. You know, you've got to replace Robertson and Britton, whether it's bringing them back or bringing in new guys. Um, you know, and as far as Machado goes, well, you've lost Didi for a half a year, so, you know, are you going to go sign a, a stopgap sort of, you know, low-level shortstop to play for the Yankees? I, that's, not, that's not how they roll typically. Um, you know, maybe for a guy with a long-term deal. I mean, when Alex had his hip surgery in 2009 and they went with Cody Ransom, Alex had nine years left on his contract. So you weren't going to go out and sign a big, a big free agent to play third base. But, you know, by the time D.D. comes back, he's going to have three months left on his contract. And, uh, you know, who knows sort of how he comes back. And uh, is he the same hitter? And does it take him some time to get back? And, you know, who knows? And the Yankees are not a, a team that just sits around and goes, well, we'll, we'll see and we'll hope for the best. That, that's not their way.